Uh, g'day guys, Robbie Frame here from Athletic IQ, here for part two of our interview with Alan Aragon. Uh, today's interview will specifically focus on nutrient timing, which uh, I can appreciate would be something that would interest a lot of the viewers at home, and it certainly interests me, uh, hence why I made a point of coming here today to ask a couple of questions. Um, so Alan... Obviously, everyone out there uh, wants to manipulate their body composition in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And one of the key things that I personally want to do, and a lot of people at home want to do, um, is build muscle. Uh, one of the ways that we've been told to do that is through um, you know, effective post-workout nutrition. Um, quite often, we get told to have a protein shake uh, immediately following our workout mm -hmm. uh, within a 20 minute window known as the anabolic window. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that that is a, a topic of conversation um, which can be quite uh, debatable. So my question to you is, is there an anabolic window? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, there is an anabolic window, but that anabolic window is a lot more broad than, than people have painted it out to be. So um, we've actually ran a, uh, a, we've looked at all of the studies on this topic and we did what's called a meta-analysis. So it's like it's a pooling of all the, the data from uh, all of the relevant studies on this particular topic. So we, what we did was uh, we compared studies that uh, administered protein a minimum of two hours away from either side of the workout. Uh, of the resistance training workout and w and that was compared with studies that administered protein within one hour or so within the window mm -hmm. so within one hour of either side of the workout so we got this a the anabolic nutrient timing type type protocols mm -hmm. and we compared that with sort of uh, uh, n non timed mm -hmm. protein and so you know we did not find any significant effect of, of timing the protein um, within that magic hour and but what we did find was that all of the effects could be attributed to total protein through the course of the day once that's optimized then the shuffling of protein relative to the bout at least within the parameters we looked at uh, didn't matter now this is not to say that um, some detrimental effects can happen if you wait significantly longer than two hours after you know after the training bout but certainly, uh, w we didn't find any reason to um, rush to the locker room and do that way dextrose right. slammer, you know, uh, so after your last set of squat rack yeah. curls. So, in a, so is there an optimal peri or post workout time frame for carb consumption for muscle protein synthesis, or? That's a good question. Um, wh what what we try to what we try to get across is that instead of looking at specifically the post workout period. Um, we try to get people to um, grasp the concept of the peri-workout period, which is the time frame between the pre-workout mm -hmm. uh, meal and the post-workout meal. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be essentially uh, two to three hours for very small meals and up to four to six hours for, for large meals, especially a large, uh, large pre-workout meal isn't going to peak in the blood until like one, sometimes two hours after you ingest it. Yeah. So there's a lot less uh, urgency to, you know, not miss the window afterwards if you have a substantial hit of especially protein. Protein would be the main driver of anabolism in these things whereas carbohydrate, if there's issues with uh, trying to resynthesize glycogen as quickly as possible for multi-stage endurance athletes for example, then great. Otherwise, you know, the anabolic effect of adding carbs to protein uh, on muscle protein synthesis is pretty much nil once the protein dose is high enough. So once that protein dose reaches the, the so-called leucine threshold, which is possible by um, at least 20-25 grams of high quality protein or more, uh, then the addition of carbohydrate to that won't at least acutely increase uh, the anabolic effect of the meal. So. Okay. Okay. So how important is nutrient timing then for performance and strength development? I think that it kind of depends on the level of the of the athlete and and who you're talking about here. So we've got a uh, continuum of importance of of nutrient timing and how how much it actually works. So typical guy who's a desk jockey, you know, mm -hmm. wants to go from a keg to a a blurry two blurry <laughs> blurry two pack. <laughs> yeah. 
um, for that population, any sort of focus on uh, anything beyond the like end of the day totals yeah. through a just reasonable distribution is is pretty much yeah, pretty so much the, nil. The focus is to focus on the big picture rather than getting bulked down in in hitting a, a certain meal at a particular time of the day. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, looking at the population. big picture rather than looking at the minor detail, especially right. for that uh, stage. For that population. Now, for, for athletes, yeah. um, it gets a little trickier, you know, because some guys may be doing um, two-a-days, yeah. where you may be hitting the same muscle group, um, or it, it, either directly or indirectly, more than once in a day. Yeah. And for those guys, then you would want to perhaps sandwich the fuels, yeah. you know, at, at, at specific times to maximize training performance and recovery, etc. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it really depends. It depends. Yeah. So take home message for everyone at home. What is the most important thing to remember about nutrient timing then? Yeah. The most, uh, what most people would want to remember about nutrient timing is number one, hit your macronutrient totals by the end of the day. Okay. And number two, if you can get protein dosed uh, for the guys with a primary goal of gaining muscle, um, they would somewhere between three and four dosings minimum through the course of the day. Okay. And because it does matter, I mean, you're not gonna be gaining, you're not gonna be maximizing your rates of muscle gain if you're ingesting your protein over, you know, two meals in the course yeah. of a day. Okay, yeah. so yeah. You, you hear anywhere between six to eight meals mm -hmm, mm -hmm. versus, and what you're probably saying there is three to four meals spread over the course of the day. At minimum, minimum. at minimum. I don't see, uh, I don't see an, any maximal, I, I don't see, I, I, I wouldn't tell, if somebody wants to eat eight times a day, you know, great, have at it. Yeah. Um, but for somebody with the specific goal of maximizing the rates of muscle gain, yeah. I don't think it's going to happen in less than three protein rich meals right. in a day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, one other um, question I had was regarding supplements, uh, mm -hmm. which should form the icing on the cake, the cake being, of course, uh, the food first and foremost. Yeah. Uh, how important do you think supplements are for um, the regular gym goer and then mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. for athletes mm -hmm. that are trying mm -hmm. to perform to the highest level? I think that there are supplements that are, are have enough scientific backing to say that they work. That, that I mean, uh, for example, creatine, caffeine, um, to a little bit lesser degree, beta alanine. And uh, there are other things that are kind of on the fence like HMB. Uh, but, but, and of course, if you, if you wanna call carbohydrate and electrolytes a, a supplement, you can call it that. I mean, that would be essential for the endurance yeah. element because of the available fuel stores that are threatened during um, endurance type events. But um, I, I think that uh, athletes who are dieting a, you know, certainly they, they run the risk of uh, being deficient in a range of essential nutrients, micronutrients included. And so I think that athletes, and specifically athletes in the, the physique sports, and, and of course, you know, the performance sports, that mm. supplementation would be necessary if you want to maximize performance and right. you want to maximize adaptations. Uh, and, but like you said, it's the icing on the cake. Yeah. You know, you've got the cake, get the cake straight first, yeah. And then, but you know, the icing will enhance things, for yeah. sure. Excellent, cool. All right, guys, I uh, hope you've taken a lot out of that because I certainly have. Um, Alan, thank you very much for coming down under. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Thank uh, you, Mr. Phenom, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what to say. Uh, and thanks, guys. Uh, that's about it. <laughs>